this could be Boston. It very well could be Charleston, South Carolina. It could be Savannah, Georgia. Or it could be Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. On Royal Street, one of the most beautiful streets in the United States of America, Royal Street in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. What's the old saying? You can't beat City Hall. Well, it looks like a church, doesn't it? Unless you look very closely, it is Alexandria City Hall. And today, you know, basically the government has taken over the church in our society. Politics is more prevalent than preaching. People would rather give $50 to Donald Trump than $50 to a missionary preaching the gospel somewhere in the world doing the work of world evangelism because our priorities are out of place. Right here is history, folks. And the thing about Old Town that's amazing, look at this. This is where George Washington's birthday was celebrated, the first one he bothered to participate. George Washington came to his own birthday party, and from its steps, Washington held its last military re review and gave his last military order. Folks, this is living history. This is living, I love history. This is living history right here. This is where Washington ate. This is where Washington drank. And close to here at a church, I forget which one, is where Washington worshiped his God. Let's step back and look at this old brick building. An example of history. That's why I love the French Quarter of New Orleans. That's why I like Georgetown. That's why I like Old Town and Boston and parts of the city, New York City. Because you're literally walking into history. And my only job as a preacher, walking into history, let's look at Gadsby's. The name is Gadsby's Tavern. My only job as a preacher, ladies and gentlemen, my only job, my only responsibility is to tell you the same thing that Finney and Moody and Wesley and Wigglesworth and Spurgeon and half a hundred other great generals of God, preachers, told the world when steeples like this dominated. Church steeples, church pews, pastors, and when the church mattered, what would the preachers of yesteryear have said? What would D.L. Moody say to America right now? He'd be in a bad mood. John Wesley would look at the methods and the ways and the means of the Methodist church and he'd be in a bad mood. Martin Luther, I'm not going to roll on the floor, but Martin Luther would roll in his grave if he saw what the Lutherans are doing. John Knox, same thing with the Presbyterians. It's an apostasy, ladies and gentlemen. The preachers of Washington's era and Jefferson's, would, would, they would puke, literally. I don't mean to, to disgust you, they would puke if they heard what was being preached today. Folks, I've just got a couple things to say to you today. My text is John chapter 1, verse 29. John chapter 1, excuse me, verse 43. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and he found Philip, and he said to him two words. Listen, follow me. Follow me. Back in verse 37, the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Folks, it's all about following Jesus. Jesus said, follow me. It doesn't matter how many hundreds, dozens, thousands of people you follow or who follow you on social media. What matters is, are you following Jesus, the real Jesus of this Bible that I'm holding in my hand? Do you follow Jesus? And sadly, for many, for the vast majority, for most men and women, it will only be an eternal, everlasting hell when they'll realize the truth. And in hell, for many people, the American dream will turn into American steam. Did you hear me? The American dream will turn into American steam. Where do we go wrong, America? Well, our steamy sexual streaming videos of fornication and of idolatry. You know, God hates them. I'm not afraid to say it, God hates it. And God's had enough of your satanic social media that only invites violence and only radicalizes terrorists. Are you listening to me? Terrorists who have no, no terror of God. Look, I'm closing. I have a word from you. I have a personal word of prophecy. I have a word for you. I have a word for you from God. This is what God is saying to you right now. Can we have a talk? 
Ain't it time, isn't it time that you and I sit down and have a talk? That's God's personal word of prophecy to you. And a song bubbles up in my spirit. It's an old gospel song. You may have heard it. Back when kids used to go to Sunday school, they knew it. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell Him all about our troubles. He will hear your faintest prayer. He will answer by and by. Have a little talk with Jesus. Have a little walk with Jesus. Spend some time with God because God wants to spend some time with you. In closing, God says, did you see the fire in Maui? God says, do you see my hand? Do you see my acts of God? God says to you today, COVID was just my warning shot. God says to you today that Ukraine, Russia war is just me warming up and me warning this world of World War III, of two witnesses, of four horsemen, of 666, of seven last plagues that are coming on this world. And God says, oh, by the way, I'm just saying, in my law of my original intent and design and creation, I didn't make hell for you. I made it for the devil and his angels. But that was before you sinned and continued sinning and wouldn't stop and wouldn't listen to the prophet and wouldn't fear me and wouldn't quake and shake in terror like the people back then did. But God says, I have decided today to make hell just a little hotter for you because I'm very angry. This is the true nature of God. I'm very angry and mad as hell and at you shame on you now the preachers of this time would have said amen they would stand up in heaven and give me a standing ovation and say preach it brother mike if god would give us a zombie revival and george washington and his people could live again and john wesley could come again and these steeples could dominate again and god would raise the dead and give me a zombie revival they'd come to my church they'd give me an offering they'd invite me to speak because they know mike dial is right i stand by my record everything i've ever said is going to come to pass has either come to pass or is coming to pass and what i say will come to pass because in the great tradition of john baptist and elijah and jeremiah and jesus and both johns i come to you in the name of god i love you today i love you today remember his name jesus